One of the things that you're going to have to do with Power BI an awful lot is get used to people wanting to export stuff. Now, the common one that everyone talks about the most is export to Excel. But what you'll find is you also need to prepare things and be ready to send things out, which often comes from PowerPoint. So how exactly can we start to export stuff to PowerPoint? And how do we make the best out of it? Now the boring bit. My name is Ross Waterston. I'm the founder of Geordie Consulting and Geordie Intelligence. Geordie Intelligence, where you are now, is our YouTube channel. Everything around YouTube is all based on likes, subscribes, interactivity, basically, from you guys. So if you could do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, drop us a comment, say what you like, say what you don't like, that does me a huge favor. If you want a huge favor from us, why not get in touch with us? We offer professional services as well. Geordie Consulting, our professional services side, has experience of dealing with organizations of all sizes, from small operations to multinationals on small projects to multi-million pound projects. Get in touch with us, we'll have a conversation, and we can help put your company and your organization's data plans on the right track. Welcome along. So PowerPoint and Power BI you're always gonna to have to be able to produce PowerPoint content from your Power BI reports. It's an important part of the business world, and there's no real way that you're gonna get away with it or without, without being able to cope with it. This is what I built in 2022, okay, for Jesmond Dean Parkrun, just as a way of thanking the volunteers, thanking the runners, making this what it was, making Jesmond Dean Parkrun the success it was in 2022. And the way I did it was kind of by copying and pasting, dragging and dropping portions out of a report, okay? And that's the traditional way. That's how a lot of content is built. And it wasn't that I didn't know any better, it was more just kind of, I needed it done quickly. The mechanism that I've gone for for 2024 is again a way that we've used with clients. It's a way that works very well, okay? But I wanted to also show you not just our 2024 report, but also the third way, okay? And in some ways, the third way is it's the most difficult to do, but it also delivers in many ways the best results. So let's have a look and see what that all looks like. So here I am in our GitHub page, okay? So I put the stats summary in GitHub just because it's an easiest repository to put things in. I feel it's better than me just dumping files on our website. I think it's the right thing to do. And what it does, if we click on it, and we'll put a link in the description down below for you to have a look at it. But fundamentally, what I've built is a nice report. It looks good. You know, you could see this in PowerPoint, and you can put this in PowerPoint. I've just got this as a PDF, which is just easier for people to download. And you can see, you can go through, you can explore the report pack. And what it actually is, if we have a look at it, Let's go to our Power BI site. Okay, I've created a report, PowerPoint export report. And in this report, we've just got different pages and they're all set up to do what's needed. And then all I'm really doing is going to export as PowerPoint or PDF, depending on what I need to do with it. Now, the eagle eyed of you will have noticed the challenge that we've got here. Okay, a PDF can be consumed by anybody. Anyone can see what's on that report. So if I'm gonna put corporate sensitive information in a report, maybe this isn't the right way to do it. Is there something better? Does Power BI have my back? And the answer is of course, yes, it does. Okay, so in theory, you can set out your report pages the way I've done, okay? And you can build your whole report pages like this. This will work for you. The issue that you always have with PowerPoint is text. Okay, people, you need some text to support actually what's going on with this. And no matter what Microsoft wants to tell you, the text side of PowerPoint, or sorry, Power BI is still pretty lame. Okay, I mean, this is great. This took some time, went through, put things in, and writing the text for it, but it's all very formulaic. It's just here is a sentence and just insert some particular values into it. The text that it puts in is, is very nice. Let's actually have a look at it. 
okay? But this is the sort of thing that you can build. So all we've really built is a sentence and we're just inserting line items into it or measures into it from our text and I've just bolded them just to make it just kind of stand out more. And that's quite a nice way of doing things. That supports a PowerPoint quite well, I think. The challenge that we get is when you come to some of the other pages where we've put text on here, for example, in terms of trying to get Power BI to give you meaningful information about stuff, yeah, is all I can say. I mean, we can go through, you can write the measures, you can do all these things, you can do it. In terms of what I've done, I've just inserted text boxes and hand typed what was needed for it, which then becomes, well, how do we put this in? And there's ways, okay? We've done videos where we've shown this is how you would do it and drop it in to it. Um, if you want to have a look, it's on our metrics video that we'll put a link up there for to go and have a look at it. But yeah, you fu fundamentally, you set up a data power up, you then allow people to drop things into particular pages and that would then replace the content of a text box. And you could delegate those out if you were corporately doing it. And you go through and you build up all the pages that you need, you do everything you need to do to get all the pages together. And then lastly, you kind of prepare it for export. Okay. But as I say, Power BI has another way, doesn't it? Okay, and the other way is this way, right? And I want, I've put the two side by side. So we've kind of got what 2022 was and what 2024 is on this report, just so that you can see the difference. But one thing I want to really highlight for you is this. I've had to screen grab it, put it in a paint, just because it was just too, it was flickering as I was going through it. What I want you to see though, is look on the left-hand side of the PowerPoint where we've got all this, the preview information what you see is this blue uh, this blue bit here okay this blue hexagon okay it does not want to show you in the preview screen that now oh, that's just stupid that's annoying what this is actually is this is part of microsoft's data loss prevention tool set so if we come back out and we go back to our powerpoint you can see we've got certain slides where it's on. If I click on the side, you see it's going to say loading or bring up a PowerPoint icon, sorry, Power BI icon, and then load the page content. The key thing is though, that loading time, what it's doing is it's going and checking, does the person who's opening PowerPoint have rights to view the report content? Meaning that if I was to share this to somebody outside the company, they wouldn't be able to view it. Okay, they would just get that blue square or the or that blue hexagon in the middle. Okay, you can also do things where you can actually produce a snapshot and it will put an image in, and but it will do the same with the image to say actually go and validate. Okay, it's quicker to load the page, but it's it's still you're going to have a validation. Or you can put a public snapshot in where it just puts this is public. This is you can now share this beyond anything. Um, again, you need to think about what you're doing. Having it as linked PowerPoint is useful because as I say, you can hover over it, you can see actually you get tooltip information that will come up and show you what's going on. And then if we want to, we can go into that report page and see, see what's happening. But this way we've built something, haven't we, that we can then readily pull things out of. And the question that you would ask is, well, you know, how do we get some text in there? And what we can do is under the PowerPoint side here, we can click here, the data options, and we can ask for data insights and it goes away and it comes away with some intelligent insights. And as I say, the tech side of PowerPoint, still not quite there, guys. You know, I know Microsoft likes to tell us all, it's getting dead good, yeah, is what I would say. It is useful, it is good, but yeah, it's still not perfect. You might find what you need to do is a lot more of building PowerPoints up or building measures and text strings up and then you can bring those visuals into Power BI or into PowerPoint as you go. So as we come further down, obviously we've got this here, and I thought, well, let's just add one, show you what we need to do. So what I thought we would do is we're gonna create a new page, so a new slide here. This is gonna be a full, a full screen slide, so we pick an alternate selection here. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna say, we want to insert from Power BI. Okay, so it's going to bring this up. What do you want to insert from Power BI? And we can go through and actually have a look and browse for it. So we can see, well, we want this from here. So we're going to pick the Power BI, the PowerPoint source, sorry, Power BI PowerPoint source page. I think it's page six. Page six, let's insert that. 
we can see we've got this. So we're just going to click insert. Right, and then we just need to size it to fit the page. Right. There we go. And what we've done there is we've suddenly we've built or we've put in a page for it. You can do that at individual report levels, not report levels, individual visual levels as well though. So if we go back here and we go to I just need part of report here, where we've got this, what we can do is we can hit edit because the way I've got this set up. We can hit to share this. So if we click there, and then what we can do is we can say we want a link to the visual. Okay, so we're going to copy that, copy it, come across to here, and let's insert it here. It, we don't want it here, but let's just insert it here. Paste the URL, insert, and it will insert that text that we've written already. Okay, so we could actually, you could see, there's ways we could bring these this content in if we wanted to. Okay, so you, if you want to build your text string, put it in, do that, you need to do some things about backgrounds and that kind of thing. But overall, you can see, we could probably do a lot of the things we would need to do. There's some flexibility, there's some variations, there's what we would need, we could bring them in. So we could build the five to 10 of these that we'd need. We could piece together what we want, we can do everything we need with it and put them all on the PowerPoint slides for us. So what do you reckon then? PowerPoint and Power BI are natural bedfellows. You will always find we need to present something to the board. It needs to be a PowerPoint. That's just common factor. If you can do it in such a way that it's secure, surely that's better for your business. I mean, I don't know anybody saying, oh, do you know what? Yeah, let's keep our business really insecure. People don't say that. If we can build a PowerPoint pack that somebody has to have access to, the, the data to have, that makes a more secure report pack, doesn't it? And if you're saying, well, we don't want to give our board permissions to these things, then okay, then you set them through as public snapshots and off you go. And then if they choose to send it to their golf buddy, they choose to send it to their golf buddy. Part of the question would always be, is the reason that we're saying we do not want to issue our board people with what really at most is a 20 pound license if you're having to buy PPU, um, premium per user for each board member. You know, if you've gone down the we are full premium capacity, blah, blah, blah then eh, you know, it's free. And it, it becomes, it's you know, up to you, I guess. But being able to put something in a way that can be shared and that can be experienced as well, because you can take that snapshot view and use that for your presentation so it's quicker to load each page, you just drop through, blah, 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 here we go. It still validates that you've got the rights to do it. But then when the question comes of, well, what does that actually mean? Or what's actually this mean? Or why is that number low, which you can get, we can drop in, we can then hover over it and look at a tooltip, which you, of course, being a bright, clever Power BI developer, you've put in better tooltips that are gonna support that narrative. And you can then actually explore, well, the, your previous months were this, or where your current month is, you can work out what the questions are going to be. You make sure that you've got those answers. If you need to, you can easily drop into PowerPoint directly from there and go to a different report page. It becomes a much more interactive experience. And that interactivity will also help move your business away from such a recursive reporting, well, not recursive, like historic reporting landscape towards a more present focus. Because Power BI naturally if you've got your reports automated and running properly, it's not a case of saying, well, we've got our current month, or sorry, our previous month available straight away on the first of the month. It's a case of being able to say, well, where are we today? You know, we've set these targets. Where are we now against our views? And that becomes a very different way of working. Suddenly we're not looking up to six weeks in the past. We're looking at yesterday. Hey, and I'd, yesterday is probably about as much as you'd ever really want to do with a boardroom, you, trust me. 
and trying to get into the today with a board, it's just not worth it. The, even yesterday can be difficult, but getting that mindset away from, we're already six weeks in the past potentially, because you have your board meeting in the middle of the next month, don't you, to talk about last month. And so, you know, the, the first month is six weeks ago. You know, even like the end of the month is two weeks ago, you know, which in business terms can be, it's like a lifetime. So have a think about that, yeah? Let me know down below which PowerPoint option you think you would use in your organization. Would you go down the route of building a whole report pack that just export to PowerPoint or export to um, PDF? Again, when you do that, you, you can't filter it beyond the filters that you set up, but some of the filters you set up, you could do that based on, oh, filter this client or filter to this or filter to that product. So you've actually got this customer base, you've got everything you want, you can produce an export for it. So if you need to produce content for lots of people, you can use that. And if you're really clever, you can also do it all through Power Automate and then actually put drop in the right details for it. So build the list and then just go through the filters and export them all. Okay, and then it's instant for you almost. Well, it's as instant as it running, okay? But it, it'll work. So we've got this capability, haven't we? And it's secure. Why wouldn't you want to do it? So stay safe, take care, ta-da.